Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Played Up, learning the basics tutorial. In this tutorial, I will be going over the five different types of desks that you have in the game and what they're all used for. We'll start off with the two easy ones first. One is your booking desk. You get this when you open your first restaurant on day one. It'll be in a package or it'll be out front depending on how your envelope's set up. But basically what the phone is used for is during your run, you can interact with the phone. I can't show because we're in practice mode. Interact with the phone and it'll call in more customers. It gives you a base of three coins per ring plus one coin for every two days. So from days one and two, you only get three coins. Days two and three, you'll get an additional one, so four, et cetera, et cetera. And that will scale until you lose. If you go to o o into overtime day 20, you'll be getting 13, 14, whatever many coins it ends up being at that level. That's the easiest one. That's basically, you. St everybody starts with that in the game. There's no research to be done. You automatically get this to start off with. But let's get rid of that just to get it, get us some more space here. There we go. Okay. The next desk, which a lot of people have seen and wonder how it works. Well, this is a blueprint desk. Blueprint desk, throughout the day, during the day, this where it says appliance right here, it will, oops, sorry, it'll cycle through appliances and it'll show up on this little blueprint. It could spawn things in or, or research things like, uh, uh, it could show things like plates, discount desks, it could be hobs, it could be tables, it could be grabbers, it could be anything that pertains to your run. Since this run that I was working on were hot dogs, I wouldn't get a wok. I wouldn't get a, a pot stand. I wouldn't, I could get an oven because oven is a cooking appliance. If I wouldn't get things that don't pertain to my run, I wouldn't get a box of apples because I don't have apples. I wouldn't get flour because I'm not making pies. You only get things that pertain to your run. And these will cycle through until you lock in one or it gets to be too late in the day and one will automatically lock in for you. But it's basically like a free blueprint. You have to pay for it when you buy it, but it's a free choice to pick what you want of the selection that exists. Now you may say, well, how do you get a blueprint desk? Well, I'll show you. Let's move this out here. Get rid of this. And there we go. Okay. I'll touch on how you get a blueprint desk in a second. When you start the game, the first desk that you need to start looking for is what's called a research desk. It says you interact with it to upgrade a blueprint in an adjacent cabinet. And the research desk itself is upgradable. What the research desk upgrades into is either, I should bring this back in here because we can use it for demonstration purposes. The, the research desk has a random chance to upgrade to a copy desk. You can read that if you like. Copies a blueprint that's in an adjacent cabinet, meaning it has to be next to it. And I'll show you what it means when you, when you can tell whether it's next to it or not by the icon. The next is a blueprint desk, which we already spoke about. And this last one is a discount desk. Interacts to halves the cost of blueprints in an adjacent cabinet. And you can use this indefinitely. You can, you can discount the same item indefinitely till it gets down to one coin. If you have an item, let's say the discount desk, which is 120, the next day 60, then 30, then 15, then it'd probably go down to eight, then four, then two, then one. So prices drastically drop every day you use a discount desk. Now, th these are the one of the three randoms that you'll get when you upgrade a research desk in a cabinet. So the only way to do that is you actually have to have one that you purchased already, and then you also have to have a drop. Either, either it being um, one that you re-roll, because you can re-roll your blueprints, or one that naturally falls on the ground. Or if you upgrade to a... Um, actually, you can't do it that way, sorry. So you have to find one that lays on the ground. It'll just spawn naturally, and then you can upgrade that, which will then turn into one of these. So the only way you can kind of do this system is you have to have one that you buy, and you have to upgrade one, which will give you one of these three. Now, you may say, well, which one does it give you? It's a random choice, but it goes in a cycle. It goes copy, blueprint, discount. I remember it as CBD. And then this recycles, cycles back to a copy desk. 
and then it goes, it just, the cycle continues. So when you upgrade a research desk into one of these, the next state will turn to the next one, the next state will turn to this one. So if you start and you get a discount desk, you know in one more day you're going to copy, and one more day after that, which would be two days, you'll get a blueprint desk. So you can keep it in there, and you can keep copying, or excuse me, you can keep researching it indefinitely until you get which of the tables that you actually want. Now, you may say, well, it was saying that you have to have things that are adjacent cabinets and this, this, and this. The blueprint cabinet, or excuse me, the blueprint desk does not factor in when you're dealing with blueprint cabinets. This is a one, this is a standalone piece that you put somewhere. When something pops up that you want, you come over and you, for the keyboard users, you hit O. For controllers, I'm not sure what it is, whatever your interact button is, and you kind of smack this and it'll lock in what you need. Otherwise, this isn't useful for what the next thing that I'm going to be showing you. So we can put this outside here. Now, blueprint cabinets, they're used to upgrade items, but it's also used to save items. Say you don't have enough money for plates, but you just want to save them for the next day. You pop them in here. These will be safe because when you start your day, all blueprints on the ground, they disappear, correct? But next round, after you finish the next day, you'll have five blueprints and you actually have six because you have this one. And what some people do is they actually save blueprints in the cabinets. So when the next day comes, they'll have say five, six, seven, eight, ten blueprints on the ground. And when you interact with the re-roll blueprint, everyone that's laying on the ground like this will turn into something new. So it's a good strategy if you don't need something to still save some. Every day your cabinet should be filled with something. So the next day you have better odds at re-rolling for something that you actually need. Now, plates we'll put up here. This is what I was saying about the discount desk as far as what it looks like when you upgrade it from this. So this is the one that I just randomly got. I put this in a cabinet. The next day, it'll go C, B, D. So discount will go to copy. It will turn into a copy desk. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. You say, okay, well, you have you have six cabinets here. How many does it? How many can you have? Well, you can have an indefinite amount but you can only have a certain amount that will actually have research that'll work. And at the moment, six is the biggest number that you can have for one desk. <clears throat> as soon as I place this, you get a little beaker icon, which means that every one of these six cabinets is being hit by one of these. So it's considered adjacent, which is up and down, bottom, or across. Now, you could fit two more in here, but you'd have to set these up in a way, I can somewhat demonstrate, if you have it like this, you can't get in here, right? But the way you get around that is, I only have six to show you, is if you turn these this way, you can fit in between these. So theoretically, you could have another cabinet here, and you could have another cabinet here. You could have up to eight in this method. Because as long as you can sneak in here and you see how it highlights from here, if these were faced like this, I can't, oops, excuse me, I can't get in here. So you can see they're highlighted, and then obviously you can come in this way if you only have six. So one table will hit eight, but typically you don't run eight of these for one table. You don't really do it that way. Because if you re upgrade something, say you want to upgrade place to an auto plater, or you upgrade a combiner, or you, or you can't upgrade a combiner, you, you upgrade something that you that you want to prep into a frozen prep, or a mixer into a into a conveyor mixer or a conveyor to a grabber or a hob to, you know, there's endless things you can upgrade. But say you want to copy them. We say, well, how does that work? Well, you turn, oops, excuse me, you would turn this table and you'd put this in here. Now you say, well, it doesn't hit all six. Well, it can't hit all six. Because of the way that the layout is, you have to kind of set these up a sneaky way. You can access both of these now. You can hit this one and you can hit this one. But as you see, you can only have four with the copy desk. The way around this is if you'd have a copy desk, say here, and you'd say you put this up here. Say you don't want to actually, you don't want to research what's in this one. You just want to copy it. Say this is upgraded to a smart grabber. Well, you don't want to upgrade that anymore because you can't, so you swap it out. So these five are now getting hit with the research desk, but these four are getting hit with the copy desk. So that's how you can strategize as far as laying out your cabinets and your desk to maximize what you want. If you're just looking to upgrade something and not copying it, you put it down here. 
I'm not sure really what you would do. Well, say, say you just want to get one hob. You only need one hob. You don't need two. You upgrade to a danger hob. You only need one hob for your, your setup. You upgrade, you get a danger hob. There's no need to copy it because you can't physically use a second one, as an example. But typically, if you can upgrade and copy something, it's worth doing because it, it doesn't really, it only adds a little bit of extra time in your day. If you're doing solo, this is a lot more complicated because of the amount of time it takes because every interaction on the table goes to each one that it's touching. So if you have five blueprints in here that can be upgraded, you have to stay here for five cycles of this. Same thing with the copy disk. Just to copy every one, you have to cycle. It'll start here, then it'll go to there, then to the next one. So it takes a lot of time. So that's another thing to be careful about. Now you may say, okay, well, I got the basics. I understand how you upgrade things. You make sure the beaker's next to it. Up to copy things, you make sure the copy desk. Well, what about if you want to discount things? Discount desks, Actually, I'll go over the pricing. So these cost 40 when you buy them, the research desks. The blueprint desk, which is down here, costs 60. The discount desk and the copy desk both cost 120. So they're very expensive. So you won't be getting these early on because you just can't, you won't be able to afford them, at least for a couple of days, especially if you're trying to buy other things to upgrade your restaurant. But once you get into typically late later game when you get a discount desk and a copy desk, the discount desk. You can see the little money icons on top of things. It discounts anything that's in an adjacent cabinet in half. So if you're trying to save it for huge automation with grabbers, you see this setup here? This one has a beaker, it has a copy machine, and it has coins. So all three tables are hitting this one blueprint cabinet. So say what you have in here, say you have a regular conveyor belt, right? You come down here, you upgrade it first. You always want to do your upgrades first. Upgrade it to a grabber. Then you want to come over here and then you copy it. Now, it doesn't really matter if you do which one of these you do first, but say you discount it first, it doesn't matter. It ended up putting it into 30 coins. Then you come and copy it and you sit here and you do the whole copying business. So there's a bit of strategy to make all these work because you can't have six or eight of these for every table or every cabinet. It just does not physically work. The best you could do would probably be saying you're upgrading four things you're copying, well, you probably want to set it up like this. And you want to copy or discount everything because discounting is, is very good. And you could turn these like this and you could sneak in here. You could do your research. Say this is free. You could do your research like this because you can't fit in here. Now, if you turn these this way, you can. So you could really, you could really cram things in here if you need to. And you could do something like this. So this is a, this can go back like this. It doesn't really matter. I like turning these so they face down so I can tell what they upgrade into, but it doesn't need to be. This is the best way to, to have a three by three or a nine square setup. Your disc, you can only disc, you can only, whatever your, the middle desk is, is hitting all of them. Whatever's on either end is only hitting four of them. Now, again, you can strategize however you want. You could put another one up here. You could put another one here and just copying things, or you could totally separate these. These don't have to be together. You could have you could have a copying section, say, you know what, I don't really, I'm not stretched for money. I'm going to leave these here. Whoop, there's the buns. Now I'm just going to put copying up here out of the way, and then this will be discounting and researching. You can set it up however you want, but the main thing with these is you want to make sure you have the correct icon on top of the cabinet for what you want to do. This is going to be a researching, copying, and discounting cabinet. Now, granted, if you have something in here that can't be upgraded like a um, smart grabber or a safety hob or a dishwasher, things that can't be upgraded. The research is just kind of null and void for that day, but you can still copy and you can still discount because of what you can reach. So you may say, okay, well, how would you actually want to set that up? Well, I don't have a lot of blueprints here. I have, say I get a discount desk and I want to upgrade that to a blueprint desk. Well, I'm going to set it like this. Now you must remember though that the discount desk goes C, B, D, back to C. So discount goes to copy. So you don't necessarily want to, you don't want more copy desks. So you don't want to put this one here, right? Because you're not looking to copy it. You're looking to upgrade it to a copy desk, discount it. So the next day you can come back and discount it again and research it back to that. But the next day, say this is a copy desk the next day, right? Well, you'd want to put that in the middle one because you want to upgrade the copy desk, we're imagining here, the, you upgrade that to a blueprint desk, you want to copy it to have two, and you want to discount it to have it in price in half. 
So there, there are ways to strategize this. Typically, you got to have a, a setup, you know, space for all this. In my diner style map that, that all these things used to be here, I don't know if there'd be room for a nine by nine square to set up research like this, but this is how you do it, basically. And you just have to be careful at the end of each day when you're in your prep stage of everyone to make sure what you have in each cabinet goes along with what icons are on the top. Because if you put this in here thinking you're going to get a copy desk after this, you're not. You're going to have a discounted copied discount desk. And that's it. And that's not really worth it. <laughs> you don't really want that. You want to have it here. Or even you want to have it here. Say you don't want to copy it. You just have it here. So that's ba the basics of how you do this. For here is plates. Now you say, for instance, okay, well, I don't want to upgrade the plates to an auto player. I just want to copy and discount them. Well, you put it in this cabinet because this has the icons with the coins and the icons with the copier. So you're just copying and discounting this. Let's see, what else do we have as an example? Nothing else that I have here will work like that. Say we just want to copy a combiner. Oops, sorry. Copy and discount it. We well, put it in this one. The tray stand, you can't upgrade uh, or the fire extinguisher, but you can say you want to have more. Say you want to have more trace ends, but it's like, okay, well, they're kind of, whoops, got a glitch to the door there. It's kind of getting full here, but you have an extra slot right here. And subsequently, you don't have to, if there are items that won't upgrade, you don't actually have to do research because it won't allow you to. This so this plus won't be here, but here you'll discount, you'll copy, whatever order you want to do. And yeah, that's that's the basics, maybe a little bit more in, involved than than what you would think. The, the main takeaways with this is setting up your blueprint cabinets in a way that the, that the tables that you want, the desks that you want to hit it for the next day are set up correctly. When you start out your first few days, you're not going to have six of these. You're going to have one of these. Excuse me. You're going to have one of these. Whoops. You're going to have one of these because that's what you're given for free. And then you have to have RNG luck to get the rest of these. Now, these can spawn. They can but they really don't. Um, you're more likely to get from a blueprint cat desk, which is here, you'll end up getting a research desk. If you have special cards that give your shop, gives you upgraded blueprints, these could easily spawn on the floor the next day, which is what happened here. Because I have one of those cards that gives you upgraded blueprints, um, which is one of the card selections. But anyway, that is the basics, little, little in depth, Hopefully it helped you guys out a lot. I know there've been a lot of questions about setting up blueprint cabinets, blueprint desks, um, discount desk, copy desk, research desk. That's the, that's the, this is the long short of it. If you guys have any additional questions about what you would choose or why you would choose to put this here, feel free to leave me a comment or you can reach me on Discord at the Ontario Gardener on the Played Up Discord channel. Um, and you can just send me a message on there if you like. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. It's been a little bit involved, but I think after t after watching the video, you guys have a good handle on how the how the different desks work, how to get each desk, and really to maximize their efficiency. But how to have a layout when you have say six cabinets, eight cabinets, two cabinets, etc. Thank you guys for watching, and stay tuned for the next back to basics learning the game tutorial. Take care now.